You're all very welcome. You're all very welcome to today's webinar um, on the US Scholar Awards to Ireland. My name is Emma Lockney and I'm the Communications Manager for the Fulbright Commission in Ireland. Uh, and many of you might already be aware that the 23 to 2024 20, Fulbright US Scholar Competition is now open for applications. So we at the Fulbright Commission in Ireland are inviting passionate US scholars and professionals to apply for research and teaching scholarships here in Ireland. These awards are open to all US citizens and nationals. Uh, we strive to ensure that our programs reflect and value the diversity of Irish and US societies and a number of equity steps to support this intent, um, including the provision of online interviews uh, for shortlisted candidates and assessment beyond academic aspects are in place. So shortly, our Scholar Awards Manager, Sonia McGuinness, will give an overview of the award opportunities for US citizens to come to Ireland and tell you how you can apply. Uh, then we'll have a Q&A with our wonderful Fulbright alum panel. And our panel will include Dr. Nana Gletsu Miller. Um, Dr. Gletsu Miller is an Associate Professor of Nutrition Science at Ind Indiana University School of Public Health and she was a Fulbright Scholar to University College Dublin. Professor Jonathan Todgers is Professor of Law at Georgia State University College of Law. He was a Fulbright Scholar to University College Cork. Um, and there's some shots uh, Jonathan has taken for, from uh, University College Cork and from his travels around Kerry uh, and the rest of Ireland. And we have last but not least, Dr. Laurel Bradley, director and curator of the Perlman Gap Teaching Museum, um, who was a Fulbright awardee to the Irish Museum of Modern Art. So we look forward to hearing from Sonia and from our, our alum speakers shortly. Um, firstly, I just want to give you a little overview of Ireland. Um, if any of you have any questions at any stage, please feel free to pop them in the chat box. Um, just type away and we'll try to get to all of them towards the end of the session. Um, and answer any questions you have. Um, I'll be putting links in the chat box as well, any key links um, that Sonia mentions, just so you'll be able to save them or click on them yourselves. So I suppose the first question is why Ireland? Why choose Ireland to come to on a Fulbright Award? Um, well, Ireland's a very friendly, engaging and vibrant country with centuries of US interaction. Um, we have a highly educated workforce, a competitive educational system, a millennia of culture. It's a popular choice for Fulbright applicants, um, particularly in the all disciplines award category. Um, but it is worth noting that some of our sponsored field specific awards are undersubscribed. Um, and so we're actively seeking candidates for those field specific awards. Um, previous Fulbright awardees from the US have said that they chose and, and indeed enjoyed Ireland because they found it to be extremely welcoming family friendly, safe, culturally rich and diverse and accessible. So higher education in Ireland is provided by nine universities, nine institutes of technology, most of which have actually been recently amalgamated into um, technological universities um, and several other colleges of education around the country. Um, there are also a significant number of well-funded research centres um, most higher education institutions in Ireland are supported by the Irish government. So, for example, um, universities and institutes of technology receive more than 90% of their income from the state. And the Irish government has also invested 2.5 billion euro establishing advanced centres of research and with world class research facilities, um, which are very inviting. Um, as Ireland is a small country in terms of Fulbright, um, we are also able to, it allows us to support um, US Fulbright awardees to come together once they're in country from all over um, the different counties um, and come together for a number of celebrations throughout the year, orientations to get you settled in um, and a number of other events. So this means you'll have a chance to build your own Fulbright community um, both with current awardees from the US, um, Irish awardees going out and our wider Fulbright alumni family in Ireland. So now I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Sonia McGuinness, um, who'll give you an overview of the Fulbright programme and opportunities in Ireland. 
Hi everyone. So as I said, I'm Sonia McGuinness. I'm the Senior Awards Manager and I look after the US scholars coming to Ireland and the Irish scholars going to the US, as well as the specialist programme. So the application process. So the application process for the US scholars has already opened and the closing date is mid-September. And between September and December, um, there's a technical review on the US side. So our US colleagues do a technical review of all the applications. Um, between around in the December time, once that technical review was done, we received the recommended candidates here to Ireland um, who were put forward for Fulbright Awards. And it's at that stage that we do our own internal review with our board and our partners, and we decide on the Fulbright awardees going forward. We generally let the awardees know in February, March of, of, of 2022. So at the moment, I've just notified all the awardees for this academic year, the US Scholar Awardees coming to Ireland for 22-23. Okay, so planning. Um, as I said, the, the awards are open on, um, are administered by our US colleague CIS who administer Fulbright in the US. Um, so you would review the awards catalog on their website and you can see the link there. Um, as Emma said, the all disciplines category is always oversubscribed, um, but we have a, a large number of co-sponsored awards, which it, it's really important to review as well. It's definitely worthwhile, okay? So choose an award, um, plan the proposal and contact the host. It's imperative and that I suppose that's part of, I, sometimes I think what's unique about our program is that whether you're applying through the all disciplines or you are applying through a sponsored award, um, there's an expectation that you connect with the host institution and you have a discussion and you receive a letter of affiliation from them to say that they'd welcome you on their campus. They can give you um, library access, computer access, email, et cetera. So that's, that's a very important role you know, it's an academic and cultural exchange. That whole cultural part is about you going outside your box and looking at the institutions here in Ireland, seeing what institution or what department within an institution would suit you and reaching out to your professional colleagues. Now, again, a lot of US academics, uh, the same with Irish academics, will have attended conferences, been in contact with Irish hosts. And it's about just putting yourself forward and sending that email because they will be welcoming. So please do that. Um, it's also imperative that you research what it means to be a Fulbrighter. So again, it's unique in the funding sphere because it's not just about your research. It's also about you as a person and what you can bring to Ireland as a Fulbrighter and when you, what you can bring back to the US after your experience. So we see that as a really imperative part of the application. So they ask you why Ireland? So that, that's a really, you know, it's important you explain your justification for coming here, not just in the premise of your research, but also you as an individual. Why Ireland for you? Why Ireland for your family? So it's really important to think about that um, and research it, you know? Um, so you can also, and then planning, you register your interest, look on the CIS website, start looking at how the application works, contacting hosts in Ireland. They're all really vital parts of the process. Go to the next slide. Okay, so the application materials to prepare. So everyone needs a project statement, um, a CV or resume, letters of recommendations. Now, you know, sometimes a letter of recommendation can also come from an Irish host. If, if you ha already have a relationship with an Irish host, which some American academics will. Short essays, a bibliography, syllabi, and then a letter of invitation is generally required, even for the All Disciplines Award. You will see in the sponsored awards, a letter of invitation is necessary. And in all the dis all, in the All Discipline Awards, we also strongly require it along with your application because it's about you making that contact connection with the Irish host and knowing that there's you're building a relationship and that they're able to support you when you come here on your Fulbright. Um, language proficiency, it might be required, it might not. And a portfolio, again, if it's in the arts disciplines, um, a portfolio is required as well. Again, yeah. So in our, yeah, again, just you're registering on the CIS website. They administer, they manage the Fulbright program in the US. So that's your first portico, okay? So then next. So in Ireland, there's teaching, there's research, and there's also professional project um, awards on offer. So sometimes people do, 
independent research and then they also do a, a, a teaching um they have a teaching post in an organize in a university here so they might lecture to postgrads undergrads generally if you look at the catalog the cis catalog where we advertise our awards and you scroll if you tab across you'll get what the expectations are from the host institution who the host contact is to reach out especially for the sponsored awards reach out to the host contact with any queries you might have about their sponsored award because i suppose they're the experts in their field and in those awards so it's really imperative that you reach out to them and ask them questions about their sponsored award and they will be happy to re re you know to respond to you okay so then we have a number of professional projects as well there's one in um science foundation ireland and also up in IMA, um, the Irish Museum of Modern Art. Go on to the next slide. Okay, so finding a host. And this is hard for Irish academics as it is for US academics, but it's, I suppose, it's about putting yourself out there, exploring the options in Ireland. Um, Ireland's a very small country. Um, you know, you can get around very quickly, trains and planes and buses, but, you know, to get from Dublin, to um, the west of Ireland can take you maybe two and a half hours. Um, down to the down into Kerry can take you maybe four hours. So it's a it's a small country. Um, but when you're researching options, decide where you want to go. A few institutions maybe you know you're looking at research that you're interested in that you want to collaborate with. Look at the academic academics in that field, you know, in that host institution and make contact with them about your plan, what you plan to come to Ireland to do, what your research is and how it can work with their institution. Okay, and again, consider diverse institutions. As Emma said, we have the ITs, which we love to see US academics applying to, um, not just the universities, but also the ITs. Um, we have a number of sponsored awards up in Letterkenny Institute of Technology, um, and we have applications every year for that, which is great, but definitely look at the ITs because we're trying to diversify the institutions that we see US application, applicants coming from, okay? Actually, sorry to go back to that, Sarah. The other thing is to talk to Fulbright alum. So whether, if you look at our um, website, you will see a huge, like loads of information about our US alum and also our Irish alum are on our website. So you might see an Irish alum or an Irish awardee at the moment, or a US awardee at the moment, who's based in an institution here in Ireland that you might want to connect with. You know, that's where you should also seek out connections and making, you know, networks. Um, because especially the, the alum will be more than happy to connect you with other academics in their field and start that process. So that's a really important place to look is our website. Um, and if you have an email you want, if there's a certain individual you want to, me to reach out to, you can send me that email and I can forward it on to that individual on your behalf. So definitely utilize our website and our alumni because their information is there and it, give, it gives bios of, of what they're doing or what they did while they were on their Fulbright. Okay, cool. So we have a number, as Emma said, a large number of sponsored awards or co-sponsored awards um, across STEM in a big way. And I mean, it's what I would say about these awards is, if anything is of interest to you, look at the catalog, tab across, see who the host contact is, because they are the person you should be reaching out to and asking questions about the, the award or asking whether your research would fit in to the awards they're offering. So that's your first port of call. Make contact with the host con contact and see how you would fit into their organization. Um, and then we have a number in business as well. So these are awards are between three and six months and some have flexibility as well. Um, but yeah, they're all, they're all available. And as Emma said, some of them are undersubscribed and we really want to see people applying for these awards um, because these are guaranteed on a yearly basis if they're advertised. Um, whereas the All Discipline Awards, our budget is slightly smaller. So definitely consider if any of these are, or even if you feel maybe I'm not too sure whether I'll fit, contact the host, contact the host and put forward your plan, you know, what your research is going to be and what you're going to do while you're in, in Ireland. Okay. So then we have, yeah, humanities and then other, so we, as you can see, we have a multitude of sponsored awards and 
there's the two professional awards is the one in Emma and also the one at Science Foundation Ireland. So definitely just do your research. Look at the awards catalogue, see what you fit into. If none of the sponsored awards are your area, please apply through the All Disciplines Award. Okay, so next step is to review the criteria on CIES. Again, it's managed through CIES. The peer review is the technical peer review is done on the on the US side. And once we receive the recommended candidates from um, the US, it's generally November, December every year. Um, we reach out to our, our co-sponsors, um, the board, the review, the board approves them, and then offers are generally made in March. As I said, I've just I've just sent offers in the last week. Um, you need to register with the CIS.org. Watch the videos on our YouTube um, Fulbright Ireland website. Reach out to our alum, US or Irish. There are so many of them at all institutions in Ireland. Even the Americans that are in country now are invaluable to you. So please reach out. Even if they're not in your academic field, they might be in the university that you're interested in going to here in Ireland. And they'll definitely help you make connections. So please reach out. And as, yeah, the letter of invitation, it's important for us to see that you've made that connection, that you've reached out to an institution here in Ireland, you have a plan, they're happy to host you. So please make sure that that's part of your application as well. That's it. Thank you very much, Sonia. Um, so we'll go into our panel discussion in a second. Just one question in the chat box so far, Sonia, if you could answer briefly, can you have secondary or tertiary institutions, host institutions? So can you go to more than one institution in Ireland? Yeah. Yeah, you, you can, um, and people have done so. But again, we'd want to see what, what the justification is and what the research is and how you're going to spend your time. But yeah, it's, it's been done before. It's just the justification need for it. And a lot of people would end up doing little collaborations with yeah. second or third yeah. institutions that yeah. they kind of... Yeah, and I suppose it's it's that's part of the experience, you know, and sharing the wealth of your knowledge and research with multiple institutions in Ireland is only a positive thing. So, yeah, definitely. Great. Okay, well, I might ask any of our panelists if you wouldn't mind to say a few words, just a very brief overview of what your Fulbright project was. So if we start with Nana, if that's okay, Nana, you can tell us a bit about your time in UCD and what your project was. Sure, yeah. So thank you. First, firstly, thank you for this opportunity. It's really nice to connect with you all and also to share the excitement that I had during my Fulbright. Um, so I was at UCD working with um, renowned scientists in the field of obesity, um, and our work was to try to um, understand how obesity, um, the biological effects of obesity affect nutritional status. Um, I'm a nutritionist in my background. And um, we particularly were interested in looking at obesity surgery, so surgery, weight loss surgery for individuals who have severe obesity um, and how that affects nutritional status as well. And the reason Ireland um, was important um, for me to work with is because the investigators there have um, a RAT model that they developed of an obesity surgery procedure. So this surgery is done in rats and also in mice. And um, you can study things in this model that you cannot study in humans who've had um, obesity surgery, um, weight loss surgery. And so I can really only do this in a few places and Ireland was one of them. I, I was very lucky enough um, in 2015 to um, connect with Ireland through some other teaching work that I was doing um, at TUD, um, Technological University Dublin. And that helped me, that planted the seeds for me to think about coming to Ireland for the Fulbright many years later. So I had visited Ireland um, on that teaching um, fellowship and loved Ireland and then started scheming on how I could come back for a Fulbright later. And it was the work that I was doing in obesity surgery um, with colleagues at UCD that provided the opportunity because that was the host institution. I was working with them on some, on the research um, related to 
um, nutritional health after obesity surgery. They have this unique mouse model. And um, I use that in my application to, to make the case that I, I should come for a Fulbright fellowship. I look forward to hearing more about that as well, because I know there was, from, from conversations we've had, there was lots of little bits of uh, Ireland that you enjoyed as well. So um, we'll hear then maybe from Jonathan, just a little bit about your project before we go into the Q&A, thanks. Sure, again, thank, thank you. Um, this is um, wonderful. Uh, I always love reconnecting uh, with uh, Fulbright and Fulbright Ireland. Uh, this is actually my birthday today and I rejected oh, every other work ob obligation other than <laughs> Fulbright because I just enjoy doing this. Um, so I was, um, uh, and thank you for the birthday wishes. Um, so I was uh, at University College Cork in the School of Law. My research focuses on children's rights issues and um, I had in more recent years been looking at how and exploring how children learn about and understand their rights and their responsibilities with, with respect to the rights of others. Uh, and I've been looking in particular through how the, what children learn through children's literature uh, about their rights. Uh, and so um, in many respects, University College Cork School of Law was an ideal spot. It is um, one of the two, maybe three at most leading uh, centers in the world for, in terms of sort of the group of children's rights experts. Um, so it, it was an opportunity to work with some of the best in the, uh, in the world who are thinking about children's rights issues. And I, I thought it was a fascinating opportunity given the work that I had done, which um, focused to that point primarily on uh, American literature, US literature, um, to think about that in the context of Irish literature, given the literary tradition in Ireland. So that was really exciting for me. And ended up ex expanding beyond just literature and thinking about other, other art spaces, visual arts, and happy to talk more about that. But long story short, we ended up um, launching a, an exhibit at a museum uh, looking at, it was a children's book illustrators doing sort of larger than life illustrations on children's rights themes. Um, so that was really exciting. And I, um, I would just say that um, echoing what Sonia said earlier, um, given that my project sort of took different directions while I was there, is um, this is the type of opportunity that is absolutely the say yes to everything. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's um, the relationships you build and the sort of cultural exchange uh, in, in some respects really outshine the sort of how much progress did I make on my research project during the time there. Um, the real value is the rest, and I, you know we'll talk more about that. But um, that that was just wonderful for me. And I do recall going to a lecture you gave while you were here, and it was just fascinating to hear about um, how how children learn about human rights at such a young age from such a young age. Um, okay, Laurel, would you like to say a few words about your project? And I suppose we, we should say as well that you know you can go to cultural institutions as well. We talk about the academic institutions a lot and research centers, but you know, you can choose to go to galleries or museums as well in the all discipline awards, as well as the specific um, Museum of Modern Art um, awards that Laurel was on. So over to you, Laurel. Yeah, well, and I, I echo the other two panelists in uh, just uh, celebrating this moment of being together and uh, reliving my experience in Ireland, which was a very charmed um, eight months. Um, so I was the first fellow at the Irish Museum of Modern Art and that so I was kind of an experimental or a guinea pig, I guess. Um, there, the, in answer to the question, what was my research project? Um, I went there imagining that I was going to organize an exhibition on Irish photography, specifically looking at landscape and how contemporary artists um, picture their own country. And I was expecting to find that that they were not um, presenting the usual a few sheep on a hillside, but doing something more critical. But of course, I had to test that theory, and I, I so I visited as many photographers as I could come up with, and um, photo scholars, um, that kind of thing. My focus on photography was partly driven by the fact that it's very portable, so it would be easy for me to take back to the U.S. I work at a, I worked actually I'm retired at a small liberal arts college in Minnesota, and I was the museum director, so I would 
organize, you know, I would bring it back home. So photography is very portable, but also in the the position description, if you will, of the IMA of the IMA uh, posting, they clearly um, wanted somebody who was going to be thinking about photography for that institution. Um, and so when and so I wanted to align my project with what I would be doing at the museum. I have to be completely honest, and I hope that the IMA people, if they hear about what I'm saying, aren't um, aren't upset. But since I was the first one, it was a little unclear what I was supposed to do. And I called the the um, the position description. It was definitely a kitchen sink kind of a description. So when I wrote my application, I just like, oh, I could do everything. And of course I can. But I ended up getting there. Um, I worked three days a week in the museum and the collections department. And then I had two days a week where I had my own studio, even though I'm not an artist, to do my own research, which involved a lot of travel. Um, and, and, and in fact, working in the museum, which was really wonderful, being part of an Irish institution, being kind of like a worker, um, it took a while to figure out what how I could be the most useful. And that was really my goal. So I ended up doing work uh, kind of um, in relation to what Jonathan said. It wasn't what I expected to be doing, um, and what I what I learned was that what they really needed were database standards for their collection. I mean, I am so much not one of these technical data people. I'm more of a big picture person, but I I like okay. I'll do that. And it was very fun because I got to reach out to colleagues in the US who actually knew how to do all this stuff. And um, so that was and then I did a variety of other things. So so that was kind of the charmed thing of being part of a community, the Irish Museum of Modern Art. I lived at the um, um, uh, the old hospital Kilmainham, the Royal Hospital of Kilmainham in a walled garden. I mean, it was amazing. So, um, and it's, it is one of these um, special sponsored awards. Um, so, um, so I hope a few people are listening who might have the uh, interest in qualifications because it was a wonderful opportunity. <laughs> from talking to all of you and, and many of our alum it seems like you know what what you've planned to come and do you know you you complete that in, in many ways but there are lots of other little outshoots you know from meeting new people that you end up collaborating with as Jonathan said you know ending up doing an exhibition um you know when you're over here so it's not confined and I suppose it's important to note as well that from the Fulbright um, Commission from our side and the, the Fulbright US program, you know, it's not, you're not limited in that, you know, um, you know, we're, we're not kind of saying you have to stick rigidly to what you're doing. We want you to develop these relationships and connections. So it's really great to hear about some of the ways you did that. Um, so in terms of, um, I suppose you, you covered why you chose Ireland and why you chose your host institutions. Um, in terms of tips on applications, Laurel, you, you touched on a few things just to let them know everything that you can do. Um, but in terms of things you might have found challenging or that required, a, you know, a good amount of time to prepare for, um, you know, there's another few months before the application deadline. So uh, have any of you got some advice on what people should be concentrating on um, or tips from what you found to help to your, your success, I suppose? If anyone wants to take that. Well, I'll, I'll yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Donna. <laughs> you, you can go ahead first. Okay. Well, my application process was a little challenging um, for a couple of reasons. I think because I was in the scholars program, which generally um, is um, addressed to people in an academic position. And even though I have a PhD and I have taught my job actually and what is is a staff position and so some of the questions or some of the aspects of the application for example submit a syllabus it's like I, I you know I thought well maybe I don't really have to do that because I'm not going to be teaching but you cannot complete your it, it will not accept your application if it's incomplete so I just made up a syllabus <laughs> <laughs> and so that was, um, and the other thing was about being invited. Again, maybe it was because I was the first. Um, 
I was, you know, I got my invitation after the application deadline. So, and and then I had to reach out to CIES and then I reached out to uh, Sonia and company and they said, you know, just do it. <laughs> and, uh, and in fact, I did get the, um, I did get the invitation but I was on the road and, and I couldn't, it didn't get come out through on my phone. And I have, I went to a public library in like Idaho and, and there it was. And I'm like, oh my God, okay, good, now go. Um, so reaching out earlier probably would have been a good idea for me. Um, and so don't, so of course your main contact is your host institution, but the, the staff people at the country Fulbright um, organization and at CIAS, they actually are can be a facilitator and they can kind of nudge the institution in certain ways so that's a recommendation i have <laughs> i guess just to add on to that um really the host and the invitation was i think what was most helpful to me um luckily i had a lot of um contacts with the host and and my sponsor um my colleague my faculty colleague before I decided to go for the Fulbright. And so it wasn't as tricky to get a letter of invitation, but that turned out to be key because um, having his engagement and his enthusiasm to, to not only help me get the letter of invitation, but also um, because I think because we weren't one of the, my, my award was to the just the general fund and it wasn't to one of the sponsored, um, um awards uh it was key for the host to also provide some supplement to funding for for my award and and they did that and so it was because of that prior relationship and that enthusiasm on their side to invite me um and that long-standing relationship and our interest in collaborating going forward which we still are um, all of those made it um, possible for for um, me to get the invitation letter, but then also get any funds, um, supplementary funds that were needed to, to help with my award. And then the other thing I would add is um, reaching out to alumni who were in Ireland who can assist me with my application. Um, I did that and I know I've helped others who were applying after me with their applications, just giving them tips on what to do and how to think about writing the application, um, I think is really helpful. So I, I encourage, um, as Sonia said, to reach out to alums for, for guidance when you're writing your application as well. Yeah, I'll just add to that. I, I completely agree in second or third, the, the comments on, um, you know, connecting with your host institution. I had a bit of a funny story. You know, I checked the box research and that was my thought. And then um, at some point closer to time, uh, you know, my primary contact at uh, UCC, uh, you know, emailed and said, you know, I'm really looking forward to co-teaching. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, I was a, a little surprised, but excited. And it turned out actually, I'm so glad I ended up having that opportunity because I also got to connect with students in a way that I would not have if I was research only. So it was really wonderful. But yes, um, connecting with your host institution, having some of those conversations earlier is a good thing. Um, the other thing I would say is my hunch is everyone reviewing applications understands that for much of our research, you're not gonna go start to finish in three or four months and have you know a finished product. So recognizing that, um, even if you spent every day at your computer in Ireland, which I urge you not to, um, <laughs> but, but I think that given that, I think it's really important to think through what is the research you would do in Ireland in terms of a broader research agenda, connecting with people, building relationships. Do you envision um, this is an opportunity for a one-off project? Probably, you know, there's some places where that might be a good fit. I, my hunch is in all the people that I connected with in Ireland, um, what was really exciting from the host institution standpoint is connecting with people who wanted to, who viewed their Fulbright as the beginning of a relationship. So to the extent that you can talk about um, how that might build beyond Fulbright and the connections and the relationships and, and the value of that short term in Ireland for sort of 
much more, I think that would be um, really helpful and actually uh, be an asset to your application. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, and, and in terms of then living in Ireland, I suppose, like I'm sure all of you had expe certain expectations, whether they were met or whether you were surprised by, by anything, um, you know, in terms of obviously accommodation can be a little bit of a challenge in Ireland, the uh, same in many Euro European countries, but, um, you know, in terms of the people you met, um, uh, social activities, cultural activities, because that's such a big part of the Fulbright program. And I suppose that's why, where it differs maybe from some other academic grants, um, you know, and, and, and exchange grants that we want to see you immersing yourself in the culture. So does anyone like to speak about how they did that? Sure, I can lead up on this one. Um, so on, on the housing front, um, yeah, so housing is a challenge. I would say if you have any opportunity at faculty housing um, or um, through, the, through, through, through your host institution, take it, um, sight unseen, that's what we did. Um, was it the most glamorous place I've ever stayed? No, um, but it was directly across from the university. It was incredibly convenient. Um, and for a short, short term stay, it worked absolutely fine. Um, and then in terms of living in Ireland, I think the thing that surprised me most is I had heard that, you know, you hear this sort of line before you go, Irish people are very friendly. And I think that doesn't begin to describe how welcoming in so many ways uh, people were. You know, so I traveled with my family, my wife came with, she continued to work her US based job, but remotely. Um, and we had a five-year-old at the time and a three-year-old. It's a little, little chaotic, um, but um, it is so family friendly. People were really generous with their time, really helpful, really open to us. Um, the pub culture is very family friendly, at least in the early hours. Um, which is when we were going to be out. And so, um, you know, uh, I think it really was an incredibly warm, welcoming place to be. It was fun to travel around as well and easy to travel. Um, and if you have kids, our kids were, you know, one at the time was in school and the other in, um, in a preschool. Um, and, you know, they, they fit right in immediately and made good friendships and so it was really easily it was pretty easy socially and I guess my only regret um which was not a well I think but more of sort of the, how much leave time I could get is you know it's always too short um because you really you know in the first few months you really are building those relationships and then they're really wonderful and the time you know goes quickly so um the other thing I would say is do it for as long as you can yeah. And you got to travel a bit, didn't you, Jonathan? You were down based in Cork, so you went to Kerry, which is just the scenery is amazing there. Isn't yeah, it? extraordinary. I highly recommend a, at least a weekend trip to the Dingle Peninsula. Uh, we also went as far north as Giant's Causeway. Um, we saw quite a bit and um, yeah, it was really wonderful. That's super. Yeah, that's the, the benefit of it being a small enough island. You can go from Kerry down in the southwest up to Giants Causeway right up in the north and not too much time. <laughs> um, great. Um, and Laurel or Nana, do you yeah. want to talk a little bit? You had the housing sorted at least. Yes. <laughs> Laurel. Yes. And so um, I had, I was given a little apartment that was in the old carriage um, uh, block, stable block um, at the Irish Museum of Modern Art in this wall garden. And I absolutely loved living in a very small apartment. I, I, I was a big surprise, but I loved it. And the other thing was that they, I was part of a residency program. So they had artists in residence who would come and go, some Irish, some international. And that was a great source of uh, potential friendships. And in fact, I still am friends with some of the people who were in residence at the same time. Um, and the uh, museum itself had a very active um, programming, generated a lot of programs, and they would bring in people for the weekend or whatever, and there would be parties and, and that kind of thing. So um, in terms of my colleagues, I did find they were very um, wonderful people and friendly and welcoming, but they were all of that age where it's like the full catastrophe age where you have 
little kids and you have, you know, you're buying a new house and your parents live around the corner and it, so they really were not up for, you know, doing much after work. Um, but I did have this whole community of um, other residents and the other Fulbrights. So, and in fact, I traveled all over Ireland and my husband joined me here and there. We're big hikers and he was actually doing research on Irish walking and that kind of thing. And so I traveled really all over. I was there for eight months though. Um, and uh, there was another young Fulbrighter who was a visual artist. And so she was like my buddy and we would, we would go to the Aran Islands and go biking and we would go down and hike on the Wicklow Way and we would go and, and that kind of thing. So, um, and then I also did connect with some people well at this, um, there's a whole culture of um, swimming in the freezing cold ocean. And I managed to connect with that through, actually it was, um, an artist who was hired, an Irish artist who was hired to work with a visiting, an artist in resident, a very famous American artist actually. And she took some of us off to go swimming um, at the 40 footer, which is where James Joyce, you know, tower and that kind of thing. And so then I was connected with these swimmers and so I just said, what the heck, I'll do that. And, um, so, and then the other thing I learned about is there's this whole culture of hill walking, well, which means hiking club. And that was something I could do without a car. So I would just take the bus out to this suburban location where they would go off and every Sunday, 51 weeks of the year they go on a hike and it was pretty amazing the whole subculture you go hiking and you bring a change of clothes and then you um change clothes the men outside the women in the cars and then there's a pub that you go and you're now in clean clothes and you're you you know you're in a pub and often they that pub would be open especially for us because rural pubs are closing in ireland and but they would open for us um and the other thing is you can hop over to the continent like boom i mean so amsterdam london we went to morocco for christmas um it's very easy <laughs> <laughs> um sounds like a really great trip um and nana what about yourself yeah so so getting back to finding a place um we we had a hard time finding one before we got to ireland but we um stayed in an extended stay that we had stayed in previously when i was there for my 2015 trip and from there we kind of scoured the city and quickly found a very nice place in um donnybrook that was a garage apartment. We had a great landlord. Um, we met people in our neighborhood. Um, the, the challenge that we had um, was our Fulbright, my Fulbright, and I should say my husband and I, he joined me, um, happened during the pandemic. So in March, 2022, <laughs> we ended, ended up into the pandemic and um, had to live like for the rest of our time during those restriction, um, pandemic COVID restrictions. But the good news is that we were so well situated in Donnybrook that we could just get around by walking um, through Dublin, which was really fantastic. We ended up finding ourselves doing outside things like walking and sitting in parks. Um, and um, as the restrictions got looser, we expanded our range. So we really got to know Dublin really well. We walked everywhere, which is something we love doing, but we got even more of a love for walking because it was just so beautiful in Dublin, um, springtime in Dublin. And then we discovered the beaches as we could expand our range further. So then we got out to um, the pool bag and um, have wonderful pictures of us walking out there. Um, we started to see the same people in our paths of walking around, especially in our neighborhood. So we made friends with our neighbors, um, having chats outside. And um, I'm a bit of a foodie, so I was able to really explore all the different grocery stores and um, um, make so many different, you know, wonderful foods and so a lot, a lot of pictures of the meals that we made 
So we may do, given the fact that we were restricted to being, you know, um, you know, not going to the pubs or traveling around the country, we did, we did make out quite, quite well and have wonderful memories and are dying to come back. From our conversations on as well, you were saying you were pretty impressed by the, like the, the freshness of the food as well that you were, you came across. Yeah. Yeah. So I was impressed with the freshness and the, the cheapness of the food, yeah. food, fruits and vegetables. I have this one picture where I spent $15 and I have like a table full of fruits and vegetables um, for my $15. And I, I, I just contrast that with, you would spend like five or five times that amount to get that, that catch of food. Of, and so I was really impressed that a lot of food is grown either in Ireland, especially vegetables are grown in Ireland, or they're coming from very close by. And they're very cheap. That was that was made a really impression on me. And because we're both foodies, we just love that. Thank you for that. Um, if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box and I'll just bring them up as we go. I think the only other one we'd had so far was just about how many people are chosen for Fulbright Awards each year. So Sonia, do you want to come in on that? We have uh, Irish um, awardees going out as well as US coming in. Yeah, so this academic year for the 22-23 cohort, I have 18 um, US scholars coming into Ireland. Um, so yeah, it's it's a good number, and uh, you just to harp back as well to um what I I was talking about the application process. I should say that for the first year this year, we interviewed um all the American well we interviewed all the American scholars coming through the all disciplines category, and so following on from that, I'd say from now on we will interview um all the awardees that are peer reviewed in the U.S. and are recommended to us for a Fulbright. In Ireland, um, we'll be interviewing them. So this year we did it at the end of January. And in those interviews, we weren't looking at, it wasn't a technical review. It was more about the person, which I, we keep on talking about, more about the person and, and what they can bring to Ireland on their Fulbright um, and how they'll utilize that. So, and that's it. We are a very flexible commission. And I, I do have those, sometimes those scholars coming back going, I didn't get, I didn't get to do what I was supposed to do. Who do I like? Do I have to write a report? Is it going to be? And you're like, no, because it always changes. So we're like, if your research changes, if things don't happen as you plan, which inevitably they won't because it's Ireland, that's all part of the process because it, it's a growing process as well. And, you know, for academics, it's also stepping out of their, their own academic, you know, burden and, and taking time out to reflect while they're here in Ireland. So that's really important. It's, it's, that's, that's an important part of it. So just to say there will be interviews going forward if you get through the selection phase in the US. That's our intention that we intend to, to interview the US scholars. But it's, it's heavily loaded on the side of you. What can you bring to Ireland? And not, again, through the prism of your research, but from you as a person. You know, what else can you bring? What can you offer us? And, and what, what, you know, what can you bring back to the US after that? So you know, it's important to think about that when putting your application together as well. Um, yeah, so we have a, a large cohort of scholars coming this year. Um, so yeah, it's good, yeah, 18. Um, and I know as well, um, a few of our speakers touched on like family members coming to visit and things like that. So if anyone has any questions on the kind of practicalities of that, uh, feel free to ask. Um, but it seems like for the most part, um, you know, partners and children really enjoy themselves and particularly, you know, for people who have their children in school here or coming for a little while, you know, it really stays in their mind from what our alum have said, you know, that the experience is really great for them as well um, and very memorable. Um, so I wanted to ask, I suppose we just have about 10 minutes left. Um, I just wanted to ask, I suppose, about those, though the ways in which your work branched out a bit and how then those um, projects or collaborations have been ongoing or did continue for a time after you went home um, and you know in in ways that your institutions might have stayed connected or grown new connections um, internationally between Ireland and the US as well. So Jonathan maybe you might touch on I'm really interested in this exhibition you did with the children's <laughs> illustrations and things um, so maybe if you touch on that and any other collaborations you worked on. 
Yeah, so that ended up, so the, the Glucksman, Glucksman Museum is sort of the university museum at UCC. Um, and I had an opportunity to be connected with the um, director of the museum who was interested in the research I was doing on children, human rights themes in children's literature. And long story short, she it sort of took with, you know, and I talked about, I'm interested in thinking about other spaces where, um, you know, there are opportunities for rights discourses with young people. Uh, and um, so we had a series of conversations that led to a proposal to do uh, what I thought was just going to be a very small thing. When she came back on during one of our meetings, it was, okay, I want a three month exhibition uh, in the entire, like an entire floor of the gallery. Um, and so it really turned into something exciting. It ended up being launched after I had returned to the US. So I returned for the opening of it. Uh, it's, they're continuing to work on that. Um, we've used their work in talking to other artists who are interested in human rights themes in, through the arts. Um, and then in terms of other collaborations, I, four of the people I met on my Fulbright contributed chapters to a book I published uh, a year and a half ago. I wrote a chapter in someone else's book. Um, the colleague who I co-taught with, we've, we've co-authored a couple pieces already. We're working on a book together. And these are children's rights related, but not children's literature or the arts related. Um, or one of them is, but some of them are sort of other parts of children's rights. So it's really branched out in a lot of different ways. Um, one of the, uh, you know, the, the question was raised earlier about secondary and tertiary institutions. I think that's an interesting idea. I also would say that at least in my experience, if I was interested in people at other in institutions, my host institution was more than happy to facilitate to support me traveling to those other institutions, spending a few days. So that's another way to connect with those institutions and not necessarily have to coordinate hosting, being hosted by two or three others. But yeah, it's really turned out to be one of the richest, if not the richest experiences of my academic career. And you know, so much personally as well. That's fantastic to hear. And yeah, I suppose, as you're saying, in terms of your colleagues there in UCC, I mean, again, Ireland's so small, most people are going to, you know, know each other in the in academic fields and things like that, interdisciplinary even. So it's definitely a good way to go through um, through through your colleagues when you're there. Um, and Laurel or Nana, do you have any comments on um, ongoing collaborations? I know, uh, Nana, you definitely have some ongoing collaborations going on. And Laurel, um, in the in the couple of years afterwards, did you you came back and forth a bit as well? Well, I can, um, so I organized this exhibition, which I made all the contacts, but I then, when I was back home in Minnesota, I was, um, you know, I did the final selection and organized with the artists and that kind of thing, um, and did a publication. Um, and one kind of nice thing that happened if for the opening, I, the opening reception, I reached out to the, um, the consulate in Chicago and the vice consul, I'm not sure what his actual title was, his mother is some kind of famous author. And he came to the opening um, and, and, and then, but we arranged for him to talk to students at Carleton College where I was working um, and his particular specialty, no, no surprise was the EU. So he, he talked to classes about the EU and um, so that was a really cool dimension. And in addition, we had Anthony Hahi, who was a very well-known Irish photographer. He came and did the opening um, talk and he also met with classes. And then later on, we, I brought over another Irish artist that I had met as a residence at IMA. So we had that kind of cultural exchange where I brought these artists in. I did get a grant from, uh, Arts Ireland, I can't remember the official name, but you know, <laughs> got some uh, to support some of the, that pro those programming activities. Um, and then the exhibition, it did travel to another venue. Um, and I've continued to be in contact with a lot of those people, often just through Instagram, but hey, what the heck. And, um, and but I, I consulted with, um, the, um, 
I, the the Irish the Photography Center in Dublin about they're creating a collection, I guess a kind of national collection of Irish photography. So we had a whole long conversation about you know how to set up a collection, what kind of standards and policies and that kind of thing. Um, so that's one example. Um, but otherwise, I think it's really just goodwill and um, ongoing sort of relationships that I created. I mean, there's another thing that I did for that opening of the exhibition is that I had heard about somebody who actually is a Minnesota resident, but she got her PhD from UCD. And so, and she was living nearby and I'd never met her. So I reached out to her and now we are friends and colleagues and she actually was responsible for traveling the exhibition to another venue, that kind of thing, so. <laughs> yeah, and I, I will just um, echo all of that. And I, I um, really was excited when Jonathan emphasized that it's important to think about your application about not just the period of time, the research that you might do in the period of time that you're there, but like what might happen ongoing. And that truly is what has happened in my case. Um, at the time, we generated data that led to a manuscript and a thesis for a student. Um, the manuscript was published in a leading journal, so we're really proud of that. Um, we've applied since for three grants. Um, one of them was unfunded. Um, one of them is pending. That one is a $1 million grant, so we're excited to hear how that one works out for us. And then one of them was funded, and that came from the Fulbright Alumni Association. So that, that was um, real exciting for us to get something related to Fulbright, some support, some additional support from, from Fulbright Ireland. Um, and then we um, currently um, have ongoing data collection. So we continue to generate data that can lead to more manuscripts, um, more grants are being thought of. Um, this is really the, the start of a really um, nice project that will be continuing for, I think, the foreseeable future. So, um, this is what Forbite was able to do for us is get a whole new um, project started for my research program. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's a really important point as well, the ongoing collaborations with the Fulbright community as well. So as Anna mentioned, we have a Fulbright Ireland Alumni Project Fund every year where we fund both US and Irish um, awardees, uh, alumni uh, to, 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 for new, new projects, ongoing projects. Um, you know, and some of them choose to travel with that fund um, or work remotely with with um, Irish collaborators. Um, so we've seen quite a, a lot of amazing um, projects come through that recently. Um, and then there's, of course, the Fulbright Alumni Association in Ireland that people can stay in touch with when, and the Fulbright Association in the US, which would have contact with all of the Fulbright alumni all over the world. So it's a really nice community to stay in touch with um, from all the events that I've gone to. Um, it's just an amazing way to meet people, a kind of like-minded people who are all interested in sharing knowledge um, and kind of giving back as well um, with the work they do. Um, so we're nearly at the end now, we're nearly coming up um, to 6 p.m. my time in Ireland, um, but so we'll, we'll wrap it up so we can let people go back to work. Um, but I just wanted to thank our alumni so much for joining us. Um, it's amazing to chat to you and I could chat to you for hours. <laughs> um, so we might have to call you back another time to, for more chats. Um, and hopefully you'll visit Ireland again soon so we can meet you in person. Um, actually on that, there was just one question in the chat box about um, are there any COVID restrictions here in Ireland? Um, for the most part, they've lifted now entirely. So um, everything has lifted since the start of March. Um, so at the moment, there are no restrictions um, on traveling. Um, there, I don't think there's even a requirement for a test at the moment. We do have a lot of resources on our website, fulbright.ie, including those COVID updates, just so you can keep an eye on it over the coming months. Um, and there as well, we have all the links to where you can apply through CIES. If you register your interest with CIES.org, the scholar program, they will send you um, a response with um, a list of more upcoming webinars, resources, tools to write your essays and things like that. So it's really important to do that as soon as possible and start thinking about your collaborators, your host institution, where you want to go and how you're going to reach out to them. And if you do need any help with reaching out to Irish institutions, if you're hitting a wall in any way, um, please do reach out to us and we can help you with that. Um, 
lastly, if any of you have students who might be interested in coming to Ireland on a Fulbright Award, the student US Student Awards will open in April and we do have a webinar coming up on 5th of April for that. So um, you can again find those details on our event, events page on our, on our website, fulbright.ie. Um, and we'd um, welcome you to encourage students to come to Ireland too. But um, thank you again to our speakers. Thanks to Sonia, thanks to Sarah, who's doing all the tech behind the scenes. Um, and thanks to all of you for joining us. And we hope we'll get the chance to meet many of you next year when you come on your award. <laughs> um, any other questions, get in touch with us, please. Um, but thank you so much for joining us and see you all again soon, hopefully. Night. Good evening or good day to you guys. <laughs> <laughs>